My name is Rebecca Rickley. I'm from Texas Tech University in Lubbock, Texas. Um, I would like to talk a little bit about what research is and composition and rhetoric, and I'm going to add technical communication to the mix, too, because I think it's a, an important subset of composition and rhetoric. Um, a while back, and this is a pretty far back, Stephen North talk, talked about making knowledge in our disciplines, and I think what we need to do is look at research methods as a way for us to make knowledge in the discipline, because without research methods, without conducting research, we don't have the kind of empirical knowledge that we can then build on. Um, so I think it's vital that students and faculty learn how to make knowledge in the disciplines of composition, rhetoric, technical communication, and so on and so forth. Now, an Sandra Harding, who's a feminist researcher, has uh, a differentiation, and I may not get this exactly right, but in Is There a Feminist Method, she talks about method, methodology, and epistemology. And that's been a real handy way for me to remember what I'm doing in, in uh, micro and macro and uh, granular type um, situations. Her method to her is a technique or a way of gathering information. And methodology governs the way that method is employed. It's often disciplinary in nature. Um, and epistemology is a way of thinking. It's a way of understanding the material. So I might use a method of protocol analysis, which is from cognitive psychology. I may employ it under the methodology of case study research. And uh, my guiding epistemology might be feminism or feminist theory. Um, so if I can articulate what I'm doing in terms of method, methodology, and epistemology, I think that's a real good way to know if and when I'm, I understand what it is I'm doing. Um, I think a lot of what we do is about articulating what we do in ways that make sense because I think if you can name what it is you're doing, then I think you're halfway there in terms of understanding it and doing it. If you can't name or articulate what you're doing, then I think you've got a problem and I think you need to work a little harder on what it is you're looking at. Um, in terms of people who have influenced me as of late, um, I, I really am sad that folks don't look more outside of the discipline. John Cresswell, who's in social science, I think, or cognitive psychology, one of the two, he has a couple amazing books, um, research design, um, uh, I can't remember the names of all of them, but John Cresswell is an amazing author that we don't look to enough. Um, John Law, who has a great book called After Method, Mess in Social Science Research, is another person that, again, is outside of our discipline, but somebody who should be informing what it is we do. Um, for an, a for, uh, composition and tech comm both has made a history of taking on methods from other disciplines, and I think we sort of stop doing that. We need to go back and look what's going on in these other disciplines and see what we can use to update what we're doing right now. Um, one of the things that I think we don't look at enough, though, is that as a field, composition, tech comm, we're all applied rhetorics, if you will. And I think what we need to do is look at the way methods can be employed in a rhetorical fashion. That is, um, in a recent article, Christy Fleckenstein and Clay Spinuzzi and Carol Papper and I looked at um, ecosystems as a metaphor for research. That is, we look at the situation you're researching and you see not only are we looking at an ecosystem, but we are part of the ecosystem as researchers. And so we have to think very, very rhetorically about what it is we're doing, what it is that we're trying to find, and how best we can try to find out that we can answer that question. Um, the problem with that kind of thing is that it's often seen as sloppy because it's situated. and we have to understand, too, that there are ways of integrating rigor into soft research, if you will. There's member checking, there's triangulation, there's uh, overlay of different types of methods, um, overlay of different types of analysis, and so on and so forth. And what we need to be able to do then is to articulate what we're doing and how we're incorporating rigor in what we do. Um, if I was going to give some advice to some graduate students, I would probably say first and foremost that research is messy and it's never going to come out exactly the way you think it is. But 
that doesn't mean you shouldn't plan a lot. You should work ahead of time a lot in terms of what it is you want to do, focusing your question, making sure that your methods actually are the best thing to answer this particular question. And then you should dive in. You should get your hands dirty. You should actually do a pilot study. And then you'll realize all the ways that you didn't focus enough and you didn't take into consideration things that might go wrong, like a tape recorder not functioning or uh, a videotape malfunctioning. Um, and then what you do is you relook at that research question. You might have to revise it somewhat and you dive in again. Um, but you need to plan for this mess in terms of doing this research because if you don't, you'll get very discouraged and you'll end up thinking that it's too hard to research and I don't want to do it anymore, which is, I think is a big problem. Um, if you don't have a class where you actually get an opportunity to have hands-on experience, then take the opportunity anyway. Do it on your own. Take responsibility for uh, your own education in terms of getting your hands dirty in the safety of a graduate course before you go out and work on your dissertation because if you fail, at a research project in a graduate course. You're probably going to learn something and it's likely that the, the, the instructor will be kind. Um, if you fail, however, during your dissertation, it's a lot more difficult to come back from. Now, so know that research is messy. Know that you need to be thinking rhetorically. Know that you need to be able to learn from your mistakes and that oftentimes you learn more through failing in research than you do from your successes. And um, then don't be afraid of the fact that you don't know something. Read as, much, read as much as you possibly can. Be able to articulate what you're doing to somebody who doesn't know. And then uh, make sure that you've employed methods of rigor so that you can defend what you're doing to someone else. Okay, I need a break here because I'm not sure whether I've covered everything. <laughs> okay, I think that's pretty good. Uh, you know, here, here's something um, that I didn't think about. Something I just started doing this year or this last year in my research methods classes is a replication study. I ask students to fill out an IRB form because I think everybody should have that experience. It's really not that scary. And then um, I also tell them that if you want to publish something ethically, you need to have IRB approval or at least exempt status. Um, IRB is the Institutional Review Board. It's the human subjects approval that makes sure we're not doing anything bad to the people we study. And so usually research like ours, since we're not performing any medical exper experiments, usually we're either expedited or exempt, which means we don't have to do much or we has to, it has to go through a limited review. But the thing is, if people don't submit IRB uh, forms, then we really don't have sanctioned research going on that we can then uh, benefit from through presentation or publication. So I tell students early we have to learn how to do these IRB forms and they do it as part of the class. The other thing I have them do is a micro study where you actually have to do, it's like a pilot study for a dissertation and you have to do a small scale study of some sort. And then the most recent addition is uh, um, a, a replication study. You take an existing study that needs to be updated or needs to be done in a different situation and you know that what the person done has done in the past has been successful and so you simply imitate. Isn't that how we learn to ride a lot of times through imitatio? So you imitate what's going on there. But it, I think what you need to do if you're not getting in your own graduate courses more than just read and critique you need to go beyond that yourself. You need to replicate. You need to go out and get your hands dirty and actually do something in the field. Because if you don't in the safety of the graduate program, it's unlikely you'll do it in the less safe uh, new faculty. <laughs> That's okay. Um, it, it, if you don't do it in the safety of your graduate program, it's it's uh, less likely that you'll do it when you're a new faculty member and so much depends on what you're doing as a researcher. Okay, because I'm interested in how we prepare uh, both graduate students and then new faculty make to make knowledge in the field, um, a couple years ago I did a very informal survey of the kinds of research methods courses that were required and um, also the books people used and the deliverables from those courses. Uh, I found that most uh, schools required at least most PhD programs required at least one research methods course, but 
the content of this research methods course varied from literary criticism to uh, ethnographic research to, you know, you name it, it was there. Um, as a result, I think a lot of folks don't feel real prepared to conduct research on the basis at least of coursework. Uh, since then, I've uh, added a couple more people, Carol Clark Papper from Hofstra and Gregory Zobel, who's a graduate student at Texas Tech. We're working on a long-term version of this pro project. Uh, every year we'll have a survey of graduate students as to what kind of courses you're taking, how prepared you feel, what kind of exam what kind of opportunities do you have to conduct research and so on and so forth. And then every year we'll also ask new faculty who are three years or less in a tenure-track job how prepared you feel based on the coursework you've done, what kinds of things most prepared you for doing research as a faculty member, and so on and so forth. From this, I'm hoping we'll get a little snapshot, uh, a longitudinal snap snapshot of what's going on in the graduate programs, what's working, what's not working, and how we might model the programs that are working better so that more people will feel prepared to conduct research.